All right, returning to our cartoon jumble. I have this beautiful Bill Watterson reference that I have not altered. All I've done is enlarged it and brought it onto a white background and made sure that it was, it was kind of a clean reference material. If we look at the actual pixels, we picked images that were four megapixels or larger. That's roughly 2,000 by 3,000 pixels or larger, which allows it to print actually at about five by seven inches <laughs> at a clean resolution. That's professional quality. We want to print our cartoon jumble at least eight by 10 inches. So we want our individual elements that make it up to be at least four megapixels. Otherwise, they'll be blurry when we zoom in. And when we print, we'll be able to tell that that line work isn't as clean as it could be. I layered up multiple images on top. And so that we could see through them, I changed their modes from normal mode to multiply, which just makes it so you see through all the white. But you can see it's just really messy now. And there's probably too much there to be an original composition. Now, all of the different layers, except for the background layer, I rotated and I used free transform to do that. You can go to edit and free transform. You can go to transform and then just do everything individually. Or you can just use the shortcut, which is what I recommend, which is command T, which will allow you to free transform any layer. So if I'm on this layer at the top, I hit command T, it gives me a transform box. If I click outside of the box, I can rotate it. If I click on the corners, I can scale it. And if I don't want it to distort while I scale it, I can hold down shift and it will lock it to its original proportions. Now remember our goal here is not to preserve the original drawings, it's to use the original lines in the line art to make our own composition. So you should feel free to distort it. And in fact, I'm gonna teach you a few other things you can do today as we're kind of finishing it up. Instead of just distorting it this way, squishing it back and forth or scaling it up and down. Another shortcut is if I hold down shift and option, I can scale it from the center instead of from a side. And why I like free transform is as soon as you have a transform box, the thing with the little anchors, I can right click inside the transform box and get more options. These are all those options that are under the transform drop down options. My favorite, you can play with all of them, but my favorite is warp. What warp does is it makes a very simple nine uh, section grid, which is like chicken wire that you can bend. So I can bend it on this side and then bend it back on this side. And it's like rolling dough. So where this line was straight before, I can make that line curved by warping it. Now sometimes I'll warp it out like that and then I'll go back to scale and I'll free transform the scale because just like rolling out dough, warping can tend to make things a lot bigger, right? But then you can bring the scale back in. And that just gave me a nice kind of curve to that line, a different change. Notice that the transform box got a lot bigger too, right? So sometimes we, we lose track of our images. The transform box can get lost. Our image can accidentally get dragged off of our canvas, but that doesn't mean the information is lost. So we're gonna learn some navigation shortcuts. To zoom in and zoom out on your image, which is often necessary, I don't want you to use the magnifying glass. That's why it's the lowest on the toolbar. The tools are kind of in, in order of how often they're used. <laughs> so the magnifying glass is for amateurs because you don't need it. It's a waste of time to have to click on it and then have to change from plus and then hold down option for minus. So instead, there's a shortcut for zooming in and out. And it is simply Command plus to zoom in, Command minus to zoom out. Conveniently, right next to the minus is zero. So Command zero will fit the whole thing within your window. We'll make it as large as possible within your window. The other shortcut I want you to learn is when you're zoomed in, sometimes you want to move around, right? 
You can do that with the scroll wheel on your mouse, but sometimes the scroll wheel gets gummed up, won't work really great in one direction. Not all mice have a scroll wheel. So your surefire way is just to hold down the space bar, no matter what tool you're using, and that will change it to this little hand tool, which again, you don't ever really need to use, except for the shortcut, because it's so low on the toolbar. But when you hit the hand tool, or you hit the space bar rather, it converts your tool to the hand tool, and that just allows you to move around the image. It is not moving anything. The pixels are all where they are. It just moves what you're seeing. And you can see that in my little navigator window here. All right, command zero gets me back. So the difference between these layers, these are all multiply layers, they're all rotated. I have one that's off of the, the screen. So how can I find this image that's no longer there? Well, if I zoom out enough and I hit Command T, it will show me a transform box no matter where that image is. And that allows me to bring it back in. And maybe rotate it and play with it a little bit. OK. So this is what I want you to do. If you still have a background layer, and that means that the layer has a lock next to it and it's titled background. That's the first image we brought in. We are going to convert that background layer into a normal layer. And the way we do that is we simply click on the lock <laughs> and it will rename it to layer zero. And that allows us to erase from this layer now and have transparency. It also allows me to easily transform it like I have the other layers. And even if you have a transform active, you can still zoom in and out. Though most functions are not allowed or are not available to you if you still have a transformation open. So we'll just ask you to apply the transformation by hitting return or hitting apply. All right. So now I've got a lot of content here. The problem is I'm distracted by all these white hard edges. So how can I make it so I don't see those white hard edges anymore? And the only reason I see them is because my background layer is no longer a background layer. <laughs> so I am going to make my own background layer. And we do this with almost every project we do. Our bottom layer is going to be a blank white layer. So we create a new layer. And the easiest and shortest way to do that is to use a little icon in the bottom right corner of the layer window. It looks like a post-it note. Be careful because it's right next to the the trash can, and you don't want to delete your layer. That would delete the layer I've selected. But if I click on that little post-it note, it will create a brand new layer for me, right on top of whatever layer I have selected. I want you to drag that layer down to the very bottom. So now we know we can reorder layers just by dragging and dropping them. And now I want to fill that layer up, because when you create a new layer, it's just empty. It's the checkerboard. There's no pixel content at all. I want to fill it up with white. And instead of using the paint bucket and trying to make sure I have pure white here in my defaults, I want you to go to Edit, Fill. We'll be doing this often. And this gives you really solid options, right? So Fill with white, Normal Mode, 100%. These are the defaults. Say OK. So now we have a layer behind everything that's just a white piece of paper. And you'll see why that's helpful as we start to build color. Now this shows me the what would print. Imagine the black outside of this as the mat around your artwork. And I don't like how close it is on these sides. So what if you want to give yourself a little bit more space? Remember, to me, the ideal cartoon jumble isn't cropped on any sides, right? It's this free floating kind of cloud. It's like when uh, Looney Tunes are fighting each other and it's like a big dust cloud and you see like arms and legs coming out. In cartooning, you call that a brouhaha. So we're making a cartoon jumble brouhaha. But we needed to have some space. It's like the Tasmanian devil. We want to have it move. So I can go to image and canvas size. This doesn't change the pixels. What it does is it grows my paper size. And so I'll grow around my original. I have already moved it up, I think, once from 8, eight by 10 to 9 by 12. 
I can go up to the next standard, which is 11 by 14, which might look a little too big, but we can always crop it down later. And I, I tend to like more space rather than less space. So notice when I do that, my background layer or my background white, it shows the edge. So then I can go, to, I can click on that layer. I can go to edit fill and refill it in with white. And it also shows content that was previously off of the edge that Photoshop still remembers. That's a big difference between Pixlr, the free online version, and Photoshop, is that Photoshop is a memory hog, which is a good thing, but it means that all the content that was off of the frame and any remaining content that's off the frame is still remembered by Photoshop. So it doesn't mean it would print it, if it's not within the image size, but it shows me this. Now, how do I know what layer that's from? Well, I can go through each of my layers, turn them on and off and see which layer it's from. It's from that one. But what if I have 50 layers, which is gonna happen later in the class? Another way that we can find the layer immediately is with the move tool, the most common tool we use, the one at the top, what I can do is I have the tool options on the top bar. And if I click on auto select for layer, then any layer I click on, it will automatically go to as the selection. So if I'm unsure what layer this is, and I'm on some other layer, if I have auto select on, I can click there and it will go to that layer. And then I can use my lasso lasso around it, hit delete, clean that up. So now I've got all my assets. I like the energy, but I want to get rid of some stuff. I want to get rid of identifying content. So I'm just going to use my lasso, go through, kind of take chunks out of it. Uh, let's see. And there, there doesn't need to be a, a particular formula to this. You can only delete from a layer if you have it visible and turned on, which is a nice kind of safety feature. Because even if you're selected on a layer that you're not looking at, right, and you erase, it won't delete from that layer until it's made visible. Because Photoshop wants you to be able to see the things you're deleting, which is thoughtful of them. Okay, here, there's a lot of identifiable stuff. Some of those lines I wanna keep, a lot I don't. And then I might decide I wanna transform it. I might decide I want to warp it and push those feet out to the edge a little bit more. Do more with this hair on the side. Do more with this striped tiger back. It's kind of nice. Get rid of these pupils in the eyes. Because I like the curves, not necessarily the pupils. Maybe get rid of that. Maybe get rid of things that are focal points like hands. That aren't as useful to me. You can actually be pretty methodical about it and erase where, where lines overlap so that one line kind of flows into the next line, so on and so forth. So there's lots of ways to do it. You keep playing with transformation. This project, this exercise is all about just getting used to these transformation tools, feeling more comfortable with them. So the way, the only way I'm erasing, the only tools I'm using are the move tool and the lasso tool. So with the lasso tool, I make sure I'm on the layer I want to take away from. And I can just lasso around it and then hit delete. Okay. 
And then my last one here, 